I know someone who would pre-schedule his sick days in advance because he expected to catch illness every year at the same time. Then he heard something of Christian science and everything changed for him. He didn't need to take those sick days so regularly anymore. And on the occasions when he did fall ill, he found that he could return to work in good shape much sooner than before. What made the difference? Well, I'd like to share with you today something of what Christian science teaches about finding and maintaining one's natural spiritual immunity. Christian science explains and practices Christ healing. It brings out what Jesus taught of the intersection between spirituality and daily experience. Now, by spiritual, spirituality, I'm talking about one's relationship with the divine, with God, love itself, the source of all life, of all that is real and good and powerful and substantial. Jesus showed the intersection of the relationship that we have with God and practical daily living, including health and healing. Christianity, as Jesus practiced it, included healing. It also included spiritual defense from contagion. Jesus knew God to be love and that creation is not only loved by God, but actually made in the image of the substance of love. This revolutionary understanding gave Jesus and those he came into contact with immunity from disease, even from what was considered highly contagious conditions. Mary Baker Eddy, the founder of Christian Science, learned of some, something of the mental nature of disease. Many a hopeless case, she wrote in part, is induced not from infection nor from contact with material virus, but from the fear of the disease and from the image brought before the mind. It is a mental state, which is afterwards outlined on the body. This begins to explain how contagion is fundamentally mental in nature rather than physical and engendered by fear. Think about it. For example, how you might feel tempted to yawn when someone else yawns, or to suddenly feel itchy or like something's crawling on you when you hear about a house that's infested with fleas, or even to feel the symptoms of some condition that you heard friends talking about in great detail at a party. These are just small examples that illustrate a greater point, that mental images and fears can produce the very sensations that we wish to avoid. Though they feel quite bodily, they're actually mental at their root. Well, Mrs. Eddy found that understanding the mental nature of contagion is a vital step to finding protection and healing through prayer. Prayer that leads to a better understanding of God as the love that governs us, replaces fear with the experience of love, freedom, confidence, and yes, even health and immunity from disease. Through her own prayers, Mrs. Eddy healed highly contagious cases of diphtheria, tuberculosis, and membranous croup, among others, while maintaining her own immunity completely. The theology of Christian science lifts one above fear of disease to safety and security. It teaches that God's creation, all of it, is made in God's perfect likeness, reflecting the divine attributes, including health, inherent wholeness, goodness, and therefore inherent immunity from evil. And Christian science brings out the utter powerlessness of evil, sin, disease, violence, even death, in the presence of an understanding and expression of divine love. 
Christ Jesus modeled this theology by healing, and he expected his followers to do the same. He also showed that the most pernicious contagion that humanity faces is simply fear. Fear which perfect love casts out, according to 1 John scripture. Bringing forward God's true nature as love, as the source and maintainer of good, and that creation includes all the elements of divine good necessary to thrive, prayer in Christian science accomplishes what material methods can't do. They destroy the mental root of disease, which is fear. A number of years ago, when I was employed in a care home, I contracted a contagious skin condition which had rapidly spread among the patients and caregivers not only in our home, but in hospitals and care homes throughout the region. The public health authorities required us, along with these other hospitals and homes, to quarantine those who were affected and to follow a strict regime of medical treatment. I requested and received permission to forego the medication in order to practice Christian science prayer for healing, with the agreement that I would remain self-isolated until this healing was complete. Christian science practice follows the golden rule. Christian scientists have a sense of civic obligation, responsibility to care for the community so they wouldn't do anything that would endanger others or blatantly act in a way that would cause others to be afraid. They'll even be immunized when the law requires it, knowing that the same principle of divine love that keeps them safe from disease also gives immunity from any potential side effects from a vaccine. I very willingly accepted the request that I self-isolate, that I be under quarantine. I saw it as an opportunity to alleviate the fear of the health authority who was concerned for the public. My understanding of Christian science showed me that God doesn't know evil in order to cure it. Love is of purer eyes than to behold evil. So my prayer didn't ask God to come to heal the condition. Rather, in prayer, I sought to deepen my understanding of what it actually meant for God to be love and to let this new view of love found in prayer lift me to know myself as the image and reflection of divine love, living my life entirely separate from fear and disease. In my spiritual study, which nourished my prayer, I encountered these wise words of Mary Baker Eddy. She wrote, Christian science erases from the minds of invalids their mistaken belief that they live in or because of matter, or that a so-called material organism controls the health or existence of mankind. And induces rest in God, divine love, as caring for all the conditions requisite for the well-being of man. My understanding of God as love erased my mistaken belief that a material organism was in control of my health. Yes, for some moments, I got swept up in the group thought that this disease was something to contend with and that I had caught it. But you see, it's just never too late to change course, to turn to reality, the reality of divine love's all-defining presence and power. I trusted love's care for me and for all of us. After a brief period of prayer that lasted but one day, I was healed. It allowed me, being free of disease, to return to the care home and take care of others who were continuing to experience the same condition, but with complete immunity. I had no fear, no fear for me and no fear for them. 
In fact, I calmly persisted in praying to understand even more of God as the sole controller of health for us all. And within a very short time, shorter than expected, in fact, the home, the patients and staff were all free of the disease. Jesus expected that healers who understand the nature of God as love and reflect divine love to others would remain safe and immune, and their patients would be healed, even if they came into contact with what was considered to be contagious conditions. This isn't about flippantly daring, risky behavior, but it's about the recognition evidenced by people like Florence Nightingale, who could work in contagious environments without sinking under disease, that when one is motivated by love, divine love, and this love informs our perspective, we can do whatever it is our duty to do without fear or harm to ourselves or to anyone else. Today, much of of the subject of disease prevention centers on hygienic practice. Christ Jesus didn't discourage keeping clean. Caring for the body is a way of expressing respect for oneself and for others. In that sense, washing is healthy and it's health-giving. However, washing out of fear that one might catch or spread some disease overlooks the essential point that in order to eliminate contagion, we must reduce fear. And Christian science practice does just that. Christian science illustrates the good that flows ceaselessly from God to us. It nourishes healing prayer. It stops fear prevents disease, or heals it, as the case may require. And it accomplishes this great work for humanity through its understanding and proofs of divine love.